About 750,000 different shells exploded at the Torapets arsenal, three to four months worth of shells used during a war which is a colossal blow to the aggressor Russia. The Russians will probably be forced to disperse their warehouses and they do not have any serious reserves. This was stated by Israeli military observer David Sharp. In an interview with Glavred, the expert commenting on the strikes on the arsenals in Torapets and Tikhoretsk noted that the consequences for the war depend on how often Ukraine achieves such successes. The priority is arsenals and military airfields. As a result of such strikes, the enemy, for example, can dismantle large warehouses, divide them into small parts and transport them in different directions to distance them from the destruction zone. And such actions can lead to the fact that the contents of the warehouses can be saved, but the maneuver will greatly complicate logistics and lead to the waste of serious resources, Sharp noted. According to him, the loss of shells for barrel artillery is of great importance. The Russians lost three to four months' worth of ammunition which is spent during the war. It is precisely the shells for barrel artillery that are of great importance. According to open information from serious sources, approximately 750,000 different shells blew up at the first exploded warehouse in Torapets. This is colossal damage. As part of the intensified military operations, the Russians spend approximately 200,000 shells per month, which is a very intensive expenditure. Therefore, it turns out that as a result of the strike on Torapets, three to four months' worth of intensive ammunition consumption was destroyed, the expert says. The Russians do not have huge stockpiles of ammunition. The Russian troops are supported by North Korea and such assistance allows the occupiers not to experience a shortage of shells for a long time. Moreover, Russia does not have colossal reserves of ammunition for a rainy day. It is not for nothing that the Russians made large purchases from North Korea. It is generally accepted that they bought approximately 1.5 to 1.2 million shells there. The head of the GUR, Budanov, even said that this seriously affected the course of the war since North Korean shells gave the Russians the opportunity to endure a war over a long distance, to spend a large number of shells over a long period and not feel infringed, Sharp said. Soldiers of the invading Russian army have attacked the position of the Ukrainian Armed Forces 30th Brigade in the direction of Minkovka village in eastern Donetsk region's Bakhmut district. The Russian soldiers were using motorcycles in their attack. Russians advancing on 14 motorcycles were intercepted and targeted by Ukrainian drones. Eight motorcycles and their crew members were destroyed by drone and artillery strikes. Other motorcyclists tried to hide in nearby trenches by abandoning their vehicles. However, their attempt to flee from the area failed. As a result of the Ukrainian attack, 16 Russian soldiers were killed by drone strikes. It should be noted that there have been growing cases of the use of motorcycles by Russian troops in their attack on Ukrainian positions. The Israeli military said dozens of aircraft struck Houthi targets in Yemen on Sunday in response to a recent attack on Israel. Anyone who harms or tries to harm the citizens of the state of Israel, we will reach them. In the simplest way, 
and we will put every measure we need with every ability we have, and we have many more capabilities to deepen and expand the strike," said Major General Tomer Bar, commanding officer of the Israeli Air Force, during a briefing in footage provided by the IDF on Sunday. The military said it targeted power plants and seaport facilities in the city of Hodeida. The Houthis launched a ballistic missile attack on Ben Gurion Airport on Saturday when Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was arriving. The Houthi media office said the Israeli strikes hit the Hodeida and Ras Issa ports along with two power plants in Hodeida City, which is a stronghold for the Iranian backed rebels. Following the strikes, fire and plumes of smoke could be seen in the air over the Hodeida. The Houthis claimed that they had taken precautionary measures ahead of the strikes, emptying oil storages in the ports, according to Nasruddin Amr, deputy director of the Houthi media office. He said in a post on X platform the strikes won't stop the rebels' attacks on shipping routes and on Israel.